Hello everybody, I'm Teach Tiger and welcome to another part of building the 7mm narrow gauge loco kit. This is part 3, bashing the chassis. On the left we've got the kit as it currently stands, with the body kit and the chassis prepared, ready for the next step. Looking at the Hornby Pog loco on the right, which the chassis of this kit is based on, one of the biggest criticisms of this loco, other than its speed of course, is its simple representation of its valve gear. Looking at the kit on the right, this seems to be very much the same. And after speaking to a very helpful gentleman at a local model rail event, who had used an aftermarket kit to better represent valve gear on one of these kits, it got me thinking about what parts I could use and how I could adapt the chassis and the body kit to find a way of more realistically representing uh, the valve gear. OK, so first things first, this is the chassis as it was seen in the last episode. And all I've done here is mix up a little bit of white milliput and I'm just filling in the hollow spaces on both sides left where I cut off the original pistons that existed on the chassis in its OO scale form. And once they're filled, it just needs tidying up with a sharp knife to get rid of the excess ready for sanding when the fill is dry. OK, here I need to stress that I'm seriously deviating from the instructions at this point and that what I'm about to do is not recommended by the manufacturer of the kit. So if you fancy having a go at this yourself and it goes wrong, please don't blame me. And only really have a go at this if you're pretty confident in what you're going to do. So I put a 32 teeth per inch blade in my jeweler's piercing saw and very very carefully I started to cut off the cylinders from the footplate part of the kit. The blades for this saw are very fragile and it did take quite a while so I did have to regularly take the saw out to clean the teeth of the blades. But once they were both removed it just required removing the burrs from around the edges with a sharp standing knife. And then before moving on I just gave the foot plate piece a quick sanding just to make sure that I'd removed as much of the material as possible and that had a nice flush finish to the foot plate. OK, so this is what the two parts look like now the cylinders have been removed. This is where they sat. So the next step to do is to take care of the holes that run all the way through the middle of the cylinders. And to do that I'm just going to mix up a little bit more white milliput and just poke it all through, smush it in until that hole through the middle is filled. This can then be left to dry and sanded flush once it's hardened. OK, so the gentleman I was speaking to at the Derby Model Rail event had a similar kit that used an aftermarket white metal adaption kit to give a better representation. So I looked around for this kit, but sadly wasn't able to track one down, so it got me thinking about what alternative parts I could use and source to have the same effect. And this is what I came up with. This is a spare valve gear that I picked up from Peter's Spares online for R2465 which is the valve gear for a GWR28XX 280 heavy freight locomotive. Now I do actually have one of these but I didn't fancy ripping the valve gear off of that because I'm not actually going to use the whole thing. The connecting rods are going to be discarded and I'm just interested in the slide bars and the crosshead. So what I did next was drill out the centre of the pistons that had already been filled as milliput drills fairly easily once it's hardened and using a 1.6mm drill bit making sure I didn't drill all the way through a hole could be drilled to allow the crosshead piece to slide relatively easily in and out of the cylinder and following that after drilling some pilot holes a 1mm drill bit was used to drill two very very short holes above and below the hole for the crosshead piece into which the slide bars could be inserted with a simple push fit a little bit of care does need to be taken at this point as the slide bars are quite thin and it's quite easy to bend them out of shape. The crosshead piece can then quite simply be inserted onto the slide bars ensuring that it runs all the way down and all the way into the hole at the bottom. And a quick check will show that it does run relatively smoothly and easily backwards and forwards on the slide bars. So next I took the chassis and using my Zuron track cutters I cut this connecting rod that runs to the piston just after that rounded piece and just before the dogleg bit. It was a simple snip with the track cutters and I repeated exactly the same thing on the other side. These were then given a quick file with a needle nose file just to make sure that all the sharp edges were removed. And then using a 1mm drill bit I drilled out the very centre of that round piece that was now on the end of the connecting rod. Again ensuring I repeated the process in the same way in the same place on the other connecting rod. So after giving both cylinder blocks a quick sand to make sure that both were flat and square, 
it was time to make a start on attaching the crosshair piece to the connecting rods. And I'm going to do that using these. These are 14 BA nuts and bolts. There's 10 in this little bag. And they really, really are very small, so extreme care needs to be taken. So if you drop one of these, you'll never get it back. So I took the crosshead piece and a 2mm drill bit, and very, very carefully by hand, I just very slightly bored out one side of the crosshead piece, making sure that I didn't drill all the way through. And then using the flat part of my wire cutters, a 14BA nut was pressed into the recessed part of the crosshead. A 14BA bolt and washer could then be inserted through the connecting rod. This was then simply inserted into the back of the crosshead and screwed in. This was a very, very fiddly process, so I can only apologise if this isn't showing up very well on the camera, but I did do my best. And then once it was nice and tight, I made sure I did this by hand to make sure I didn't over tighten it. I added a second 14BA knot to use as a locking knot. I then added a little bit of Loctite to make sure it didn't come loose and trimmed off the excess bolt with the track cutters again. So the next step was to attach the cylinder pieces to the chassis. So using the foot plate as a reference point, I put the whole assembly together and dry fitted the parts together onto the chassis just to make sure there was enough clearance to allow the wheels to go around successfully and just to have a look and see whereabouts it would need to go on the chassis in relation to the foot plate and what sort of rake of the cylinders I wanted. Then it was just a matter of applying a few drops of cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue before pressing the cylinders onto the filled parts on the chassis, making sure that I adjusted them for the right rake and clearances before the super glue set. And this was then left to harden on one side for 24 hours. 24 hours later and we can see that it's dried exceptionally well. I did in the meantime make these cylinder covers to go over the ends to cover the filling which I used using a little bit of plastic card and a small nail to emboss the rivets. So as everything looks good and there doesn't look like there's any clearance issues I used the 9 volt battery just across the wheels to give it a quick test run just to make sure that everything turned freely and everything moved well and that there were no sticking points or anything catching. And I think as you can see it works pretty well. I'm quite happy with that. So there we go, that's job done. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out really at this point. As stated before, I'm not really an expert so I can only apologise if I misnamed any of the technical parts. But again, I did my best. And uh, I think it does look a little bit more prototypical than it did beforehand. I know it doesn't look perfect. I've got a few more bits and pieces that I need to add. But I think overall, in terms of how it looks, in terms of its general appearance, I think this is a step in the right direction. So, I apologise for the length of this video, as I seem to have gone over the 5 minute target I generally set myself for these videos. So I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks very much. Bye bye.